Hi, I'm Bob Iaculo. United Water believes that all citizens need to be informed about the important issues that affect their daily lives. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. The importance of rehab, next on Caucus New Jersey. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Holy Name Medical Center in Teaneck, New Jersey. Healing begins here. New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, auto insurance, homeowners insurance, and banking under the principle of stewardship. Wells Fargo, the law firm of Gibbons PC, Johnson & Johnson, and by St. Peter's University, the Jesuit University of New Jersey. Promotional support provided by NJ Biz, all business, all New Jersey, the Star Ledger, and NJ.com, everything Jersey, and by New Jersey Monthly, the magazine of the Garden State, available at newsstands. Welcome to Caucus, New Jersey. I'm Steve Adubato. You know, each year thousands of people suffer from serious injuries and illnesses. And rehab can help in the recovery process. Here in the studio to talk more about rehab and what you need to know, we have Wendy Greenspan, is a speech pathologist at the Adler Aphasia Center. Jason Cavuntis is a director of rehabilitation services at Holy Name Medical Center. Avi Golden is a stroke survivor who has been rehab, in rehab for about six years. And finally, Rich Bartlett is a volunteer firefighter who has been in rehab due to an accident on the job. I want to thank all of you for joining us. There are going to be a couple of websites throughout this program. Check them out, important information about rehab. Um, by the way, we're going to be talking about different kinds of rehab. Your rehab is um, fair to say a shorter term rehab process that deals with, describe your injury. I had a crushing injury in my elbow uh, from a fall at a fire. And I had surgery to put things back together, and um, I also had a tear in my tricep muscle, so I lost some function with the arm as far as mobility, and I'm in therapy to get the strength back and the mobility. In surgery as we speak, excuse me, in rehab as we speak? Yes. And let's describe, for, for those who don't know, I was telling you, you know, a couple of shoulder surgeries. Last year at this time, this is how far this shoulder would go up now, all the way up, because of rehab. Describe uh, the process just a little bit. Uh, when I first started, they uh, took measurements to see what my range of motion was with the shoulder and elbow, and I had very limited motion. And now I have almost full extension and uh, flexion with the arm. Because of hard work and rehab. Yes. Describe it a little bit, if you could, Jason, because we're going to talk about your rehab, which is a different kind of rehab, but no less significant and important. Go ahead. Well, uh, in, in rehab, what we want to do is we want to restore people's mobility and their function. And, and obviously, they're coming to us because something has happened, and he had an orthopedic injury and surgery after that. So um, what we wanted to do is make sure that Rich gained his mobility back, gained his function back, and, and got him back to, to what he does in, in his everyday life. But you do a couple of different kinds of uh rehab, right? At Holy Name, yes. We have physical therapy, we have occupational therapy, What's and we the have speech therapy. Well, um, physical therapy, we, we tend to work a little bit more with the lower body, uh, working on uh, people who've had injuries to their knees, or if somebody had um, a stroke, we may teach them how to walk again. And we also work on the upper body, things like range of motion and strengthening. Um, in occupational therapy, we would tend to deal a little bit more with um, ADLs, like teaching people how to dress again, um, we also focus on hands in occupational therapy. We have a certified hand therapist at our center. And then we also have speech therapy uh, where we help restore people's speech. Rehab means a lot of different things, doesn't it? it does. Yeah, it does. Um, I think what... By the way, before we go any further, the Adler Aphasia Center is? The Adler Aphasia Center is a place for people who have aphasia to come, usually after they finish the more short-term acute rehab, such as at Holy Name Hospital. And, or any hospital. Or any hospital, correct. And um, people come there to work on their communication skills and also to enhance quality of life, to um, rebuild social networks, to engage in activities that maybe they had to leave behind because of their stroke. Um, and so we are a much, um, much more of a long-term rehab process. 
uh, people can come to the Adler Aphasia Center and stay as long as they feel that it's benefiting them. We need to clarify a couple things. Um, mm -hmm. A couple words need to be clarified. <laughs> First of all, the Adler piece of it is named after Mike and Elaine Correct. Adler, mm -hmm. our good friends, uh, longtime friends of public television, who founded the Adler Aphasia Center. Mm -hmm. Mike Adler, a uh, very successful businessman, uh, experienced he, um, aphasia. Now, the question is aphasia. You want to take a shot? Sure. Sure. Why not? Go ahead. Aphasia is? Aphasia is a speech pathology talking. So talking is very difficult for every different people. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so for me, six years ago, all I can say was Mike, Michael, Michael. And then slowly getting less every day. You every had a stroke. Month. Uh, I have a stroke and aphasia. But a lot of people is n uh, no talking, but music is fine. You know, TBI or, um, I forget the number. Brain tumors as well. J brain tumors. Brain tumors. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Everybody is different, so yeah. So aphasia. Mm -hmm. Again, we've been involved in trying to teach people about what aphasia is. Mm -hmm. um, and there's not a, a lot of public awareness or enough public awareness no, about aphasia, right? No, unless you have somebody in your family who has aphasia or you have aphasia yourself, you've probably never heard of it. And it, um, it's, it's a, a communication yes. disorder. It's a communication disorder where people lose the ability to use words. So people know what they want to say. They have all the thoughts that they always did but they can't put those thoughts into words. And it can range from very mild, where somebody just forgets a word here or there, or it can be quite severe, where they can't use any words at all. Um, and it can affect people's ability to understand words as well. But that is not the case for you at all, in terms of understanding. Understanding my language is, is fine, but the words or the sentence is six years ago it is nothing is Michael Mike Mike all day long for one year uh, but then slowly getting better so now I'm talking but a lot of people a lot of people are not talking or one or two lines and and slowly getting better but very slowly so interesting you've been in rehab at the other aphasia center mm -hmm. total six years roundabout You've been in rehab as we do this program in the summer of 2013 for? Five months. Five months. Well, actually, rehab, my injury was five months ago. Rehab is about three and a half, three months. Okay. How long do you believe he will be in rehab? I would say probably a couple more months um, until he's ready to do all his exercises on his own and he's gained full range of motion and strength and ready to get back to uh, Is he 50%? You've got to you gotta ask Rich. I, I think, <laughs> you know, considering that when I first took the splint off, I could just go like this with my arm, and I can go out here, I could reach behind my head, I can tie my shoes, those things, you do all those things I like wasn't this. able to Grab, do in the beginning. Like this, stuff. Do the, get this shot, guys. I remember when I was doing rehab, you remember they make you come up your back and do yeah. that whole thing? You can come up your back. Part way. Right. Not as much as I used to be able, or I could do it with my left hand. Um, You're getting close. Getting close. <laughs> and so you it's, could see, you believe you see the finish line, there's a point here. Yeah. It, what's Troubling, not troubling, but a little discouraging is the strength. I still have to work on the strength thing with the free weights and the uh, other weights that uh, they have in the, uh, in the therapy department. So there are physical exercises. Sure. You are pushing him. You believe <clears throat> you know how far to push him. Um, he thinks he knows how far he should be pushed. And there's a good discussion, let's say, that takes place. Sure. Yeah, the, yeah. I, I think it's important that there's always open communication between the, the, the therapist <laughs> and the... Is that uh, what we're calling it? Oh, you, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we could call it you know, that. I, I'll, usually, you know, I'll usually tell people when we are working, you may experience some discomfort. Um, Is that what we're calling some, it? Well, <laughs> that's what people say PC stands for pain and torture or, or physical Put that terrorist. in perspective. Put that in perspective. <laughs> well, I think, I think all the time, I think when you're rehabbing, especially post-surgical uh, mm -hmm. with an operation where you've had pins and things like that, there's going to be some discomfort well, as, you, as you rehab. Um, there shouldn't be horrible, sharp pain where you, you can't tolerate it for the rest and of the day. And things aren't going to pop. Sleep. 
No, no. I think if you have a if you have a good experienced therapist like we do, you know, you, you, like I said, you communicate with the person. You let them know you might have some discomfort, you know. But we don't want to push, you know, plus, uh, past the the point of of extreme, extreme severe pain that lasts for a long time. And it's not like, therapy. hey, let's hurry up and get this done. No, no, there's going to be time, and especially as Rich is talking about strengthening. I mean, strengthening really comes in time after an injury like he's had. You know, it's probably going to be about a year until his arm is full strength. It really takes that And you need that, that year. Long. You need it's that like, year. like, hey, could you give me the six-month plan? Strengthening can only happen at a, at a certain rate, you know, and we can push him and we can have him exercise. And as long as he's doing those things, he's going to progress, but it has there's to no take a certain period of time. There's no accelerated plan. No. It's so interesting. I was coming in, um, I hate when I say I was working out before I came in because it sounds like, oh, yeah, you got to talk about your workout. But I was working out this morning um, and watching Sports Center. As we do this program, they're talking about Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant, who was re uh, covering, recovering from an Achilles injury. I no, is it Achilles, guys, or it is his knee? I can't remember um, because we're not interested in, in the L.A. Lakers. So um, <laughs> I'm watching it, and allegedly Kobe Bryant tells one of his teammates who, tells, who tweets, hey, Kobe Bryant is three months ahead in his rehab effort. This is a true story. As we do this, you're going to read this. And so the point of the story is that they talk to medical professionals like yourself, and they said, look, there's no way in the world he's three months ahead. He may think he's three months ahead, but he needs this much time to truly heal. You can't fast track this. Fair assessment. Uh, yeah, I agree. I'm not talking about Kobe Bryant's case. You can't fast track this stuff. No, I mean, he is an athlete, so I think he's going to progress and return to sports quicker than, say, I would if I had an injury like you Yeah, we saw but, what happened with Derek but really, Jeter. No, but, but, but when you come back too early, you know, your body has to take time to heal. Like I said, that strength, and it can only happen at a certain rate, so you really need to respect okay. that, and, and, and you'll get back when you're ready. Now, listen, the reason I wanted to go through this is because there, there are all different kinds of rehab. The rehab we're talking about here is very, is it different in a lot of ways? Yes, Describe very it. different. Yeah. So, first of all, aphasia is something that tends to be a chronic condition. If somebody has aphasia, they're going to have it for the rest of their lives. Long term rehab. Correct. Long term rehab. Um, that's not to say that they won't progress because people progress with aphasia months and years after they've had the stroke or the head injury. And so, the kind of rehab we do, we're there for the long term. People can stay as long as they like. And we, the focus is broader. We try to help people speak better, but also we take a look at their quality of life. Be specific. Um, so, like with Avi, what's going on? I mean, he said six years ago you would repeat what? Uh, Michael. Michael, Michael, Michael. Yeah. OK, so you wouldn't have been able to be on the show right. then? Well, no, I, I can come and sit and Michael, 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 and then you might not have been the best guest, okay? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. now you're a great guest. Of course. But what? Of course. I, I, no, and you're very confident, <laughs> I can see. What had been going on with him then? Uh, give us a sense of the kinds of things you were doing then and moving forward with him. Well, I think initially, I wasn't with Avi six years ago, but initially the therapy, the speech therapy, would be one-on-one -on -one with the speech therapist, focusing on improving communication. And now, six years later, the focus is on communication, but also quality of life, helping people re-engage with activities. With groups, you do a lot of group work too, right? A lot of yeah. group work. And the reason why we do group, I mean, one really big reason is um, when people have aphasia, they become very socially isolated. Their um, social circles shrink. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so with the group, you start to rebuild a social network. You, you meet people with aphasia, and you start to get new friends. Are you forced, then, to communicate, Avi? For me, yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and what did that do for you? Um, so now, um, or four years ago and now, uh, I go to talk with police, firemen, EMS, speech pathology student, and uh, church, and synagogue to talk about aphasia and and discuss uh, amongst you know aphasia um, and I go is um, also I go to the hospital to visit patient who has stroke and and maybe aphasia too why do you do that uh, because I enjoy and I like to I like to come I don't know why but I want to come and 
a hospital to visit patients because I want to. Like, Is that part of your rehab? I think so. Yeah, and I think you bring them a message of hope. Hope, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's absolutely. Yeah, so could... his rehab is very different. Yes, yes. Where are the similarities here, though? It's interesting. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a challenge. It's a struggle. It's hard work, no doubt about it. Yours is shorter term than yours, mm -hmm. but mentally very challenging. As you're listening, yeah. what are you thinking? Uh, I don't know. It, it, to understand what Avi's gone through, you, you have to see people like that and from the beginning. And I guess with what he's doing, going to talk to different people, he's encouraging, you know, explaining this is where he started six years ago, and now he's to this point. So there is hope and, you know, with treatment and the specialties that are out there and, you know, different technology techniques and these people can have... Uh, see uh, progress. What about people who say, I'll do it on my own? Um, I, I think that, that those people tend not to make as good a progress as you would as if you saw a professional, um, especially if they've, they've waited, you know, three months, six months, if they've had, a, you know, an injury, um, like a sprain or a strain or something like that. Um, I think they'll get to a point where they realize that they can't push themselves as much as a, as a therapist can push them. And then also they need that professional guidance uh, from, from, a, from a physical therapist or an occupational therapist. So, so someone says, I, I'm tough enough. Those are the people that usually come to me a year down the road and I tell them, you know, we probably should have got started on this a while ago. So the rehab will be a little bit longer, but for the most part we can still, you know, we can still focus on their goals and get them back to doing what they want to do. But if you start with a plan, early on, you're much better off. Sure. sure. If you start with a professional rehab person at Holy Name, at Adler Aphasia Center, at wherever it is, you are better off than saying, I'm going to try this on my own, and then all of a sudden you're like, well, wait a minute, maybe I should have done this six months a year ago. Sure. You're better off. Sure. I mean, I think, and especially in either Rich or Avi's case, I think, you know, they knew they had to go to therapy. I mean, surgery and a stroke, there was, there was no question. But sometimes we'll see people with just maybe a nagging neck pain or back pain injury, um, and they won't come to us immediately. Uh, and, and then, like I said, when they eventually do come to us because their, their, their pain is not getting better or they're getting possibly worse, then, then the, the, the road to recovery is a little bit longer. You see the finish line, though, for Rich, right? You see the finish line for him, right? Oh, I see. I definitely see the finish line. I'm going to ask you the same question. What do you see? Well, I, I, six years ago, I was a paramedic. Um, and then I is a surgery. And then be, after surgery is uh, medical school. So I think, we'll see, cross my heart, <laughs> I want to go back to medical school. You want to go back? Uh, uh, yes. Wendy? Um, you know, I think as, as uh, we spoke about before, aphasia is a, a long-term chronic situation and Avi is um, one of the best people I know that's learning to live very successfully with aphasia. Um, and when you talk about quality of life changes, yeah. um, the sky's the limit, really. Um, Avi is an amazing person. He does all kinds of things. He goes hang gliding, he goes skydiving, he goes rock climbing. Describe what he does again. Well, you belong to the New York Outdoor Disability Club, mm -hmm. and you guys do everything. Skydiving. Yes. yes. Seriously. It's awesome. Go ahead. Um, after the stroke, okay, before the stroke, I was um, going a lot of stuff like, um, um, sit, um, sit. Uh, sky uh, sit. Parasailing? No. Um, scuba diving? No. It's um, down the mountain. The down the mountain? Uh, skiing. 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 Or snowboarding. 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 You right. went okay. snowboarding? Yeah, before. And then stroke happened. But now I go skiing and fall down and get up and fall down and get up <laughs> and fall down. But it's okay because, hey, let's go. Um, and after the stroke is scuba. I love scuba. Um, I and I go three months pro before after to go to uh, no barriers um, to go scuba diving, hiking, biking, stuff like that, and um, gliding, um, water ski, 
you know, stuff, many, what many about people. about bungee jumping? You ask me that. <laughs> Talk to bungee him. Bungee jumping? I don't know what this guy does. <laughs> I thought, I, I looked at the notes and I thought I knew who you are. I don't know who you are. <laughs> I can't believe you do all this stuff. Yes. And, and, and also, for me it's no problem, but I want to talk to everybody and say, listen, come, come as well, because who knows? Nobody knows, so let's go. Oh, hold on, bungee jumping. Well, bungee, no, no jump, bungee jumping for me. <laughs> He'll jump out of a plane, but yes. you won't go bungee jumping. Yes, exactly. You will not. <laughs> no. That is not part of your rehab. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Rich, what do you think of this guy? He's uh, braver than I am. I wouldn't jump, I wouldn't jump out of a perfectly good Aren't plane. Aren't the bravest of the, of True, the but, you know, firefighters? True, <laughs> when you're in a perfectly good plane, I'm sorry, I'll stay in that perfectly good plane. <laughs> well, you know what's so interesting is I listen to Avi. How much of it is attitude? I think attitude is a, a huge part of your rehab. I, I, I think people who come in that are motivated, have a good attitude and, and really know what their goal is yeah. um, and, and discuss that with the therapist, I think they, they do much better than people who, are, who aren't motivated and, and really don't, you know, don't, don't have that drive to get back to where they were before. Let's talk about family and all this mm. because it has to be tremendous support from one's family. Family. Uh, family support is good. Uh, I couldn't drive for the first few months and my son would take me. I have two grown sons. They would you know, figure out schedules and take me to rehab. Um, uh, my wife, she was a support there. Uh, when she heard that I was injured, she was initially told I hurt my back. And they were taking me up to the hospital, and that one of the fire chiefs was taking her up there. And when they wheeled me in on a stretcher, they heard me scream. She says, that's not his back. And, you know, and she, was, she was good with it. You know, it happened. I, it could have been worse. I could have hit my head when I was flipped up in the air, but I didn't. It was my elbow. It was a very traumatic injury. Um, a great deal of pain in the beginning, but the surgeon I had was fantastic. Put me back together with plates and screws, and you know I still have use of my arm. So, but so. your family was critically important to your sure. rehab. When I came clear. home, you know I couldn't do. I was in a sling and a splint. I couldn't do much, and so my wife, my younger daughter, and everybody pitched in to help me out. And so I want to so. be clear. I'm sorry for interrupting. If you did not have that kind of family support, your rehab would have been that much harder. Uh. I think so because I would have had to rely on outside help to get me there. Um, and I also had these splints that uh, put my arm into flexion and extension um, that I had to wear several times a day. And they would encourage me to put, you know, put it on by sitting at home watching the TV and stuff like that. And, and, and Holy Name, it's, it, you guys help talk, you talk about the family as well? Sure, we, I mean, we <clears throat> always try to get the family involved in, in patient's therapy. Uh, if patients, sometimes patients will need to be, you know, ranged at home. They might have to have somebody, you know, bend and straighten their elbow. Um, sometimes, you know, you probably had issues with dressing. So we certainly will teach uh, family members how to assist patients with dressing. Um, so and emotional need, support. Oh, definitely. That's that, that's one of the most important things that we had. And in Adler, uh, at the Adler Aphasia Center, I mean, I, I've been there enough times to know mm -hmm. how important the family members are, how supportive family members are talking about. Yeah, it they're very supportive, they're very important for rehab, but they also need support themselves um, because... Um, and there are groups for that. Yes, we have support groups for family members. Um, we provide training and education to family members um, because caring for somebody who's had a serious event like a stroke is um, a huge, huge stressor for the family. Um, family roles change tremendously. Um, and people are having to um, do things that they never had to do before, and so they need a lot of help and support. So we have a, um, a support group led by a professional, but then the family members also meet each other and give each other a lot of great mutual support. Last word, Avi, your family? Family, friends, and coworker, all, all of it together is really, everybody is very helpful for me. Very supportive. Very, very supportive. But you will not, after all that, you're still not going to do bungee jumping. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paul. You've done a great public service. We appreciate it. Thank you all. See you next time on Caucus, New Jersey. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence, and 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY.
Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Holy Name Medical Center, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, Wells Fargo, the law firm of Gibbons PC, Johnson & Johnson, and by St. Peter's University. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios. My name is Dr. John Rundbeck. I'm actually the medical director of the Interventional Institute here at Holy Name Medical Center. The peripheral arterial disease actually is extremely common. It's one of the forms of hardening of the artery. As interventional radiologists, we perform minimally invasive image guided procedures. Generally, the procedures we do are alternatives to what would otherwise be major surgery. Almost 80% of those patients can avoid amputation if they're referred for us for these sort of procedures. Holy Name Medical Center in Teaneck, New Jersey, 1877 Holy Name. Healing begins here.